Hello everyone and welcome to the second lecture of my programming for beginners course called the Coffee Break Programming. So in this section, in this lecture number two, we will try to really develop our, our, our first algorithm. So we remember what was algorithm from the last year, last year, last uh, lecture. Uh, the algorithm was just a list of instructions and we will develop an algorithm and in order to do that we will of course need a problem to be solved. So the topic for today, for this lecture two, first we'll, we will introduce an example problem that we uh, would like to solve. Then we will see the two parts involved in the process of development of any algorithm. And afterwards we will really develop our algorithm. And we will to, uh, write the algorithm in, in uh, two uh, forms mentioned in the previous lecture. Remember that uh, we could uh, write an algorithm in a natural language. <clears throat> and this is how, how it will be done today. And we will use the English language, of course. And secondly, we will try to write the same algorithm also in the graphical language called flowcharts. So let's get started with an example problem to solve. So what would we like to do today? So this is our great problem to be solved. So my problem is that I need to boil water for my tea. <coughs> A very interesting pro problem maybe. And now, of course, I don't want to do it myself. I don't want to get messy and boil the water myself, but I have a friend Bob, let's say, let's uh, not involve a computer just yet, but let's say I want my Bob, uh, my friend Bob to do the task, uh, the water boiling task for me. And uh, in order for Bob to be able to do the task, <clears throat> I must first explain Bob, of course, how the task can be done. So I must write an algorithm for this problem. I must think out how it can be done, to think through the process, to think particular precise steps, one by one, which must be done in order to solve my problem. So I need to write an algorithm, okay? So let's do it. <clears throat> so this is my problem. I need to boil water for my tea. How can I do it? So the first step in my algorithm would be, for example, like that, take the teapot. The first step, precise instruction. The second step, pour water into the teapot. Also a precise instruction. And thirdly, the final step, put the teapot with water in it in place and turn it on. <clears throat> so my algorithm is a very simple one in this case and it only consists of these three steps and now Bob if I give the algorithm to the to, to, to my friend Bob he can now perform the algorithm do all the steps mentioned in the algorithm in the mentioned order of course and as a result my problem will be solved so the water will be boiled for the tea okay and here we can see a very important distinction that we will always need to take in mind when developing algorithms. So here we can see two parts of the process of developing uh, the algorithm. <clears throat> and uh, we will see this, these two parts also in uh, the next um, slide. So here, so now we have developed the algorithm we have, think, uh, we have thought it through in our minds and now we want to write the algorithm down. So, so we have something to give to Bob so he can read our algorithm and perform it. So, as we remember from the, from the last lecture, from the first lecture, the programming is actually just the process of building algorithms. Okay? And now those two parts I mentioned in building any algorithm. So the first part is to figure out the algorithm. 
for example, in our heads, just to think the algorithm. This is the part we just did in the previous slide. We thought the algorithm. We thought what steps in what order uh, need to be done, to be performed in order to solve the problem. This process is the first part of building any algorithm and it's called the figuring out, maybe we can call it like that, figuring out of the algorithm in our heads. And the second part is writing the algorithm down. Know that we can, uh, that we have already thought the algorithm, now we just have to write it down in the necessary form. So the necessary means in that form that we need um, in the situation. So the form can be in particular, uh, particular natural language, we can write algorithm as we remember from the last lecture, we can write algorithm as um, uh, in, in the form of the graphical language, we can write algorithm in some pro programming language that we will do the most uh, in the most cases in future and maybe in other ways, but there will always be those two parts. And if we think about it, the first part to figure out the algorithm, this is the real challenge actually, okay? So this is the challenging part, to figure out the algorithm, to think it, okay? Maybe just in our heads, not written down yet, but just to think algorithm. This is the hard part. And afterwards, when this is done, when we have in our heads, when we have already thought the algorithm, then the second part to write the algorithm down, this is just a piece of cake, okay? This is an easy part, writing it down, all either in... Uh, in uh, natural language sentences, either in uh, form of graphical language or in programming language, uh, this is an easy task, okay? So this is a very important distinction and ma uh, many students uh, have a pro uh, very tough um, time to understand this uh, because they sometimes uh, they think that uh, writing a program in some particular programming language is a is a very task, uh, hard task to do, but it just means it signif uh, it's, uh, signals us that we haven't actually done the first part yet. We haven't yet figured out the algorithm if we have problems uh, with writing it, okay? So we have to think it out through and then writing down it's very easy. Okay, so now we have developed our algorithm, we, could, we have thought it out, and we already actually, mm, we have written it in the natural language, as we uh, saw two slides before, there were, there were three steps, and let's now try to write the algorithm down in this uh, flowchart, graphical language called flowchart, we haven't uh, learned anything about this flowchart language yet, but let's just throw the example in this language and uh, afterwards we will try to uh, <clears throat> understand <clears throat> the semantics of the language from the examples. And here it is uh, sa said that it's writing the algorithm in the flowchart language. Actually it's uh, more of uh, more like a drawing because it's a graphical language and voila! This is a drawing of our algorithm. Here we can see several uh, types of uh, shapes of elements. So this one is called the starting element of our flowchart. So this is this uh, denotes uh, the place in the algorithm where we have to start executing. So Bob, when he receives such uh, such uh, an algorithm, Bob firstly has to find the starting element and then going. Uh, along those arrows, Bob just goes forward one element by another until he reaches such an element which is called the ending element of the flowchart. And when the Bob uh, when Bob reaches the ending element or end element, it means that the algorithm has reached its end and the problem is solved if the algorithm is correct. Okay, so the first. And start element, the end element, and in between here we can see three elements with a similar shape, this rectangular shape, 
This is the basic element of the flowchart called the uh, task, the task, and the task denotes the, the element which, uh, which is a step in our algorithm. Uh, as we remember in the uh, natural language sentences where we wrote down the algorithms, there were three steps, and here are also the same three steps written inside those three step elements. This is very straightforward, of course, uh, drawing, nothing else, just those three steps. Take the teapot, pour water into the teapot, put the teapot in place and turn it on, and our task is solved. So very sim uh, similar, yeah, uh, and also very simple <clears throat> flowchart because, of course, the task mm, wasn't very Mm, complica uh, complicated. <clears throat> okay, so in this lecture, what have we done? What have we learned? We have seen the example problem to solve. Then we have seen two parts of algorithm development. And I'll remember always that the first part is the hard part to think algorithm. In our heads, this is the hard part, and the second part, writing the algorithm down, is just a piece of cake, so to say. And then we tried to develop our first algorithm of the very interesting problem of <laughs> um, boiling the water for our tea, and we saw those both forms, how the algorithm can be written down in a natural language and in a graphical language, and we haven't yet seen this third form, the mm, programming language, okay? But we, that's, uh, this will, we'll, we'll inspect uh, in much greater detail, of course, in the following lectures. So these three things we did today, and in the next lecture we will mm, continue to look at this same example problem a bit more into uh, we'll go a bit more into detail and we will try to refine our algorithm to make it better why does this algorithm need to become better well also next lecture okay that's it for today keep tuned and goodbye <laughs>